Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand. You know, the first time I ever stepped foot into an apostolic church was back in 1986. Now, if you grow, if you were grown up as a Methodist, like I did, and only went to a few services a year, Easter and Christmas, you can only imagine that stepping into an apostolic church was just a tad bit different than going to a Methodist church. Nothing against the Methodist. But it was a lot different. Amen. And the first memory that I have of that church is Brother Atkins standing at the pulpit and Sister Atkins on the organ. And I remember the fire that she had with her, the way she played that organ. She was worshiping as she was playing that organ. Amen. So my very first impression of an apostolic church was Brother Atkins at the pulpit leading the service and Sister Atkins worshiping God the way she could worship God. And I'm here just to submit to you today, I don't care what's going on in this world right now. We, we have a lot going on. And Brother Johnston said it just a little while ago. We're going to take our time today. We're going to take our time. We're going to worship God. We're going to lift our hands. We're going to rejoice in the Lord. And we're going to be thankful for everything that he's done for us. So before we get started today, I believe it would be in order if you just lift your hands. Let's ask the Lord to bless this service, to touch every saint of God that's here. Bless every family. Lord Jesus, we praise you, God. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace, Lord. God, bless this service. Move in a powerful way, God. God, we submit it all to you, Lord Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your mighty name. Hallowed be thy name, Jesus. Bless us.
Hallelujah. If you're thankful that he lives today, just praise and worship him. Lord Jesus, we are thankful, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, we magnify you. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands. Let's lift them as high as we can. Let's magnify the Lord today. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, let's just keep this atmosphere of praise going for a little while. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. When I first got the Holy Ghost in 1991, you know, a lot of things changed after I got the Holy Ghost. Verses in the Bible had new meaning to me. I understood it a little bit differently. Songs had a little different meaning to me now because I was starting to pay attention to what the words were actually saying. But, you know, I was 21 years old. Or I guess I was 20 years old when I got the Holy Ghost. And in this verse in this song where it says, lift him higher. <laughs> I remember as a 20-year-old standing on my tiptoes literally trying to lift it higher you see when, when you come from nothing and, and you don't have anybody to turn to and you're not used to having the Lord God Almighty on your side when you get the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden when it says to lift him higher you want to lift him as high as you can Hallelujah. even if you got to stand on your toes Hallelujah. Hallelujah so let's just lift the Lord right now Hallelujah. let's lift him high Hallelujah. let's lift him up Lord Jesus, we praise you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, one more time. Let's give him praise. Let's just honor the presence of the Holy Ghost. God, we glorify your name. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you thankful for Jesus? I'm glad for Jesus. Someone said, you don't know how thankful you are for something until you need it. Well, I want to tell you the last couple weeks we have needed Jesus. And God has been there for us. By the grace of God, God has been there for us. Hallelujah. 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 It's so good to see everybody here today. It's so good to see Luke and Autumn and, and uh, I'll show up. I'm going to show Hudson off here in just a little bit. But we're thrilled that they're here. It's good to have Connor home from Arizona him. Good to see some others we haven't seen for a while. Glad to see you in the house of God. And I'm glad to be in the presence of God. I'm thankful for the presence of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. And uh, we want to remember, of course, Brother Sodders that is uh, still in the hospital. Let's lift him up in prayer. He is doing some better. Uh, he's still real sick but he is doing some better. Let's pray for him. Uh, let's also pray for our family uh, over the next week that God can God be with us and God help us and give us grace that the hand of the Lord would be upon us uh, over this next week. And I have no doubt that God will. And I have no doubt that God will. So, uh, but pray for us. Pray for Janie's dad. Sister Janie's dad, Bill, did you get a report on something this morning? Okay, he's still he's still uh, still real sick, so let's pray for Bill and ask God to touch him, minister to him. Also, uh, Sister Rhodes, Arlene Rhodes, and Jack Rhodes, let's lift them up. They're both sick. Uh, Sister Charlotte is not well today also, uh, is sick. Sister Duncan, let's pray for them. Casey Burns and Scott Jacobs. Also, Sister Deb, uh, let's pray for Sister Deb today and Brother Tom and Tina uh, Massey. Let's lift them up in prayer 
ask the Lord to minister to them. I know there's probably a spoken request. It's good to see Sister Robin. Let's continue to pray for Sister Robin's family. Uh, of course, we, uh, her mother passed this past week, and we had her services. And uh, uh, let's pray that something was said in those services that will touch the heart of her sisters and her family. God hand, God's hand would be upon them. Also, let's pray for Sister Lisa. Sister Lisa is still real sick and unable to be here. And uh, ask God to touch and to minister to her. If you've got an unspoken need today, would you just slip your hand up? Jesus knows all about it. He knows all about it. Pray for Elder Sowards. So good to see Sister Sowards back there. And let's pray for Elder that God would touch him. Amen. Pray for this service that God would work and minister among us and that we would be open to what God wants to do and receive what God wants to do today. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. God, it's so good to be in your house, to feel the presence of God, to stand in the sanctuary of God. I pray today as we've entered this building that God, your anointed, would be upon us and the hand of God would move in this place by your divine will and purpose, O oh Lord, anointing every person that's come in here today, O oh God, for we open our hearts to you and we pray your hand upon us, O oh God. I pray today, Lord, that you would touch and minister to those on the prayer list, touch Sister Duncan, and minister to her today. We pray your healing to Sister Deb, God, and Lord, that you would touch her and Tom and Tina, uh, that you would minister to them. We pray for Sister Charlotte, God, and uh, Brother and Sister Rhodes, let healing virtue flow and minister healing to their body, and by your stripes we are healed. Healed, oh God, I pray for others on the prayer list in need of healing. Brother Sodders in the hospital. I pray, God, for our family that, Lord, you give us strength in the days ahead. Lord, heal the broken and hearted, I pray, and minister today, oh God. I pray, Lord, by your hand, God, that you would touch those that are lost. Every backslider, you get a hold of the heart of every backslider, God, and you bring them back to you. I pray, God, today you touch, Lord, those we've been witnessing to, teaching Bible studies to, God, get a hold of their hearts. Cause them to cry out to you, oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, you order this service today. You direct it in your divine will. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you. be anointed and prayed for today. This altar is open for us to anoint you and pray for you. If you'd like to come, we want to pray the prayer of faith that God would touch, minister to you today in the name of Jesus.
lift our hands and thank the Lord today. God, we give you praise. We give you glory and praise. We magnify you, Lord. You're a prayer answering God and we praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Kenzie, would you take this prayer request and pray over these in Jesus' name? Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Praise the Lord. We'd like for the ushers to come as we lift our tithes and our offering. Brother Carl, would you ask for the blessing of the offering and the tithes today?
Shout with a voice of praise. Shout with a voice of triumph. Shout with a voice of praise. Shout unto God for the victory. Hey, 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 give the Lord a shout of praise. Triumphant in battle, we are victorious. God is most high over all the earth. Jesus has come. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. We exalt you, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the God, our victory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise your name. Amen. You may be seated. One of the wonderful things, there's a lot of things that pastors get to do that are just absolutely wonderful. And I love I love being a pastor. I love doing what I do. I love you. I love people. And, but this is something I really love to do. And I want you all, where's Hudson? Bring Hudson up here. I want to show this baby up. Dad and uncle are fighting over who's going to hold him back there. (laughs) 
I don't want to be remiss today because I need to honor a very special lady. And this church, I, I think I could really say this church would not be what it is today had it not been for Frank and Lavonna Atkins. And how many of you sat under them as they were pastors? Would you stand, Frank and Lavonna? Would you stand? If, if you were under them as, as they were your pastor, Frank and Lavonna Adkins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for a while. Till uh, they retired in January, uh, December 31 of 1999. That's when they officially retired. You were blessed to be under their ministry. You really were. You may be seated. Sister Adkins loved this church. And I I gotta okay, I gotta make the transition. Sister Sodders. She loved this church. She loved you. And she gave years and years of dedication to the first United Pentecostal Church of Ravenswood. Making pizzas over in when the kitchen wasn't even hardly a kitchen. You all remember the old kitchen? Oh my. I don't know if you could you call it a kitchen, Elder Pettit, back then. It was, yeah. It had a stove. <laughs> yeah, there, wasn't, there wasn't much of it, but it was there. And and all the dinners that they served, and all of that came out of that kitchen and all the work that they did. And I remember when uh, I first started dating uh, Crystal, and I came down one day uh, I don't know if we were a month into well we didn't have very many months to date uh, I don't think we were a month into it we were sitting in the living room over at the house and brother Adkins was there and sister Adkins and all of a sudden sister Adkins started questioning me what tell me about yourself how long have you been living for God? I mean, she she grilled me for probably what? I don't know, a half hour, 45 minutes at least. It seemed like all day. I didn't realize that was coming. I tr Trust me, I broke out in a sweat going through the questions that she asked me. She wanted to make sure that the man that was dating her daughter was going to live for God. She wanted to make sure that we were going to have a godly home for her grandchildren. And I honor this lady today. It's going to be a great loss to the First United Pentecostal Church and her pastor. It's going to be a great loss to us and a great loss to our family. Uh, both with Chris and with um, Sister Sauter's passing uh, so quickly. It, it's going to be a tremendous loss to all of us. But God is giving us grace, and God is helping us, and I honor her today. She has a legacy. She has a legacy that is still going on. As long as there's a church in Ravenswood, it's part of her legacy. As long as one of her children and grandchildren are living for God, there's a legacy. And she has prayed and planted and sowed into that legacy over the years. And that legacy remains. I'm so thankful that God placed me in that family, in a godly family, that God placed me there and a Gave me a wife that loved God like her mother loved God. I remember Brother Cole, he was he was uh, trying to tell me who Crystal was. He said, oh, she can sing. He said, she's a singer. He said, every preacher needs a wife that can sing. I said, Brother Cole, every preacher ought to be able to sing, but that's not always true. But... Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for her. 
she invested in in tj johnston and i'm very thankful for her faithfulness through the years so let's stand this morning as soon as we know the arrangements you'll know we don't know what the final arrangements are but as soon as we know we haven't even been able to meet with the funeral home yet but as soon as we can we will let you know what the arrangements are and because uh, i know you will want to honor her as well and it is our honor to have bishop and sister garlitz with us what a great way to start the year with these two people i couldn't think of two people i'd rather have uh, ministering to us on their first service of 2022 than bishop and sister garlitz i love these two people they have been a rock for us they have been so solid in our district and and folks they are what they are they, they are christians and they live what they believe and what they preach and we are honored to have these two with us today brother garlitz would you come we love you so much god bless you in jesus name Well, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. Sister Garlitz and I offer our condolences to the church and especially to uh, the family. Uh, times like this are, are, uh, are difficult. But the good book says, we sorrow not as those that have no hope. Aren't you glad we have a hope? Because you know Jesus, you have a hope beyond this world. Amen. For the scripture said, if in this life only we have hope of Christ, we'd be of all men most miserable. But oh, thank God for the glorious hope that we have. Amen. One of these days, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to miss the rapture, but boy, I wish I could. We, we, got, a, we got a cemetery at home called Potomac Memorial Gardens. And I, I wouldn't want to miss the rapture to see it, but boy, I, I'd like to I, I'd like to see what happens in that cemetery, brother. It's going to tear things up. <laughs> Hallelujah! Well, thank the Lord. Everybody over COVID. No, help us, Jesus. I, I heard that it was two two mommies were talking. They had dropped the kids off for school at, uh, I think, second or third grade, and they were talking. And the one mother said to the other one, said, uh, I'd like to find out who in the world ever started uh, this saying that you should sing happy birthday while you're washing your hands. Because if you, if, if you wash your hands as long as it takes to sing happy birthday, you probably... Uh, are sanitized and she said well why do you say that because she said every time I go in the bathroom at home to, to wash my hands the kids think I ought to be carrying out a birthday cake <laughs> 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 oh my well you know uh, it, we got to just deal with it we might as well laugh a little bit huh amen well it's an honor to be here always enjoy coming to be uh, here in Ravenswood, and this uh, wonderful church carries the spirit of its pastor and family, and uh, we're glad to have our airmen here today. I told him this morning, I thanked him for his service. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm just going to get right into the word of the Lord. And uh, you're going to help me preach today? Yes. Okay. 
Now that that aroma that's wafting through here, uh, that that aroma don't don't let that distract you. Uh, I will try to let you out uh, in time for you all to go get something to eat. Praise God. In the book of Isaiah, I want to read today, the book of Isaiah, chapter number 49, and uh, we're going to begin reading at uh, verse 14, and it should be up there on the screen. There it is. Nice big font. Everybody can read that, right? All right. Let's read it together. But Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me. And my Lord hath forgotten me. Everybody ever feel like that? Come on. Be honest. You ever feel like the Lord didn't know where you were? Yeah. I, I, hey, I've been, I've been preaching, brother, for way over 50 years. And there have been a lot of times this preacher uh, wondered where the Lord was. But he was there all the time. Hallelujah. Verse 15. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? He said, yea, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. And verse 16. Behold, that word behold is take notice. Watch, look. Behold, I have graven thee on the palms of my hands and thy walls are continually before me. Praise God. Pray with me. Lord, speak to this congregation today. Speak to these wonderful folks. Lord, God, to this, this very morning, let the breath of the Holy Ghost breathe right into this building, God. We, we thank you for your presence that we feel here already today. And let your word, Lord, be mixed with faith. Lord, let your word be mixed with faith in our hearts today to receive an impartation from you that we can leave here different, Lord, than the way we came. Praise God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Another translation, I kind of like the way it reads, uh, is interpreted this way. The people of Zion said, the Lord has turned away and forgotten us. And then it says, the Lord answered, said, could a mother forget a child who nurses at her breast? Could she fail to love an infant who came from her own body? Even if a mother could forget, I will never forget you. He said, a picture of your city is drawn on my hand. You are always in my thoughts, and your city will be built faster than it was destroyed, and those who attacked it will retreat and leave. Now, the context of our story today finds the nation of Israel uh, cities ransacked, burned, sons and daughters have been carried away into captivity. And in this chapter, God speaks to the nation of Israel a promise. I was reading just uh, yesterday morning a book that I recently received from the people who make Gallup poll and uh, their research efforts, and it had to do with the business world and the culture uh, since COVID has been introduced, introduced to us on a pandemic scale and what it has brought by the way of suicide, what it has introduced by the way of alcoholism, and the abuse of drugs, and mental health in general. It has left an impact upon us. I would be remiss 
if I did not say that it has, in fact, even impacted the church. But I'm glad to know today that God is greater than COVID. Yeah, he's greater than COVID. And I'd just like to serve notice on this first Sunday of a brand new year that the church is still going to be the church whatever happens in 2022. For the Lord said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What was that rock? That rock wasn't Peter. No, that wasn't Peter. That rock was Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Israel, Israel uh, uh, is, is struggling mentally with wondering where is God in the midst of our chaos, in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of all of our questions. Where is God? And so they simply say, the Lord has forgotten us. He's forsaken us. Uh, you know, I'd just like to stop right here and pause a moment and say, you cannot go so far away from God that you cannot get back. All right. I've got a, I have the most wonderful father-in-law. Wonderful father-in-law. For over 30 years, he was away from the Lord. Some things happened in the local church at home. And uh, he, the, the, he had great confidence in a particular man. And this man disappointed him in some lifestyle church, uh, choices and, and uh, left the church. And it, it so impacted my father-in-law and hurt him so deeply that he said, if he can't serve God, then I can't either, so I'm just going to quit. He dropped out. 30 years he was away. And uh, for 30 years, my wife and I and, and uh, her, her brothers and sisters, we prayed for Dad Palmer that God would let him come back. Sandy's mom kept living for God, serving the Lord. And then in 1995, the Lord uh, took Mom Palmer home to be with the Lord, and Dad went down to Martinsburg in Eastern Panhandle to be with some of his children. And uh, he, uh, in retirement, began to buy and sell yard sales. And so every Sunday was flea market day. Every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. We did everything we could to try to get him to come back to church. And some things began to change in his life, and all of a sudden, Brother Johnston, he, he decides he's going to move back to Kaiser. Said and sent word to the children that lived in Kaiser in Mineral County area, would you look for me a place to live? Well, they found him a place to live, and it was in a mobile home about 80 yards from the front door of the church. How many know God's a prayer-answering God? I feel like I want to tell somebody today, it doesn't matter how long you've been away from the Lord, the way back is just one step. I said the way back is just one step. And, and Sandy and I went one afternoon to, to check on Dad. Uh, he, of course, lived alone, and he was up in his 80s. And uh, uh, we got there, he... He is all dressed up, had a shirt, tie on, nice sport coat. And uh, I don't remember which one of us said it first, but, hey, you got something going on, Dad? You going somewhere? And uh, he said, uh, yeah, I've got uh, a lady over there across uh, on the other row of housing. Uh, I'm going over for dinner. And so I thought, uh-oh, he got a girlfriend. First thing I thought, and uh, he said, well, well, really what we're doing is having a Bible study. And I go, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so uh, we dismissed ourselves. He went, 
and, and I'm trying to figure out, wonder what kind of Bible study. You know, my mind is going, uh, there's a lot of Bible studies out there, quote, unquote, that I don't support. And uh, I said, I wonder what he's getting into. So finally, we, we talked again, and I said, Dad, who's teaching your Bible study? He said, Russell and Becky Blacka. Russell and Becky Blacka, well, they were, they were top shelf members of Bonnie View Apostolic. And Russell had been song leader, worship director, and Sunday school teacher, and trustee for years and years and years. And they're teaching the Bible study to my father-in-law. And, and so I, I would kind of not be pushy, but I'd throw a little uh, seed out. Uh, Dad, you're going to come to church this Sunday? Oh, oh I, well, I'm thinking about it, you know. And sure enough, after he had been there a few months, one Sunday morning uh, I heard a commotion in the back of the church, and I looked, and there come Dad Palmer, that same jacket on, shirt and tie, and uh, he come walking up uh, the side aisle, and he sat about halfway up on that side. And uh, uh, I, I preached my heart out. I did everything I could do but go get him and drag him up to the altar, you know, because uh, that's where I wanted him. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, he didn't make a move that Sunday. And he come the next Sunday, and he come the next Sunday, and he came another Sunday. And then one Sunday morning, I was over here praying with somebody in the altar after the, after the service uh, was coming to an end. And, and all of a sudden, I heard, I heard like a fire engine go off over on this side of the church. And it was my wife and a bunch, couple of the other ladies that were, uh, they really loved my father-in-law. And there was the Brother Black, Brother Russell Black. He was about big as that lineman that come up here a while ago uh, carrying that baby. And, and he, he had a hold of my father-in-law's wrist, those 80-some-year-old hands, and he was holding them up. And I looked over, I run over there, and tears are streaming down his face. And, 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 and in just a few minutes, he was praying in that most heavenly language as he spake in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Hallelujah. And he was renewed back to the Lord. God wants somebody in this church today to know that you are not forgotten and he has not forsaken you and he's as real today as he's ever been. And he would like for you to have a happy new year. Hallelujah. So God, uh, God says in this passage that his people are un forgettable to him you know uh he he takes the love of a mother which is to me uh, the love of a mother supersedes any other love on the face of this earth next to god's love and and so he takes the love of a mother and he says you could it could it be is there a possibility that a mother could forget her nursing child could could that ever happen well, he said, if it could happen, please know that I, the Lord, God, Jehovah, I will never forget you, Israel. Somebody today in this building needs to know that God loves you. He has loved you from the foundation of the earth. He has loved you when you were still in the womb. And you are not forgotten of God. And God has a destiny for your life. Mm. You know, David, David wrote in the Psalms chapter 27 and verse 10. He said, when my father and mother forsake me, the Lord, the Lord will take me up. If it could be, my son-in-law is a precious man, treats my daughter like a princess. And uh, uh, when he was a young, tender lad, finances got tight in their family. And uh, uh, for some crazy reason, he had a brother, two boys in that family. She put my son-in-law in a foster care. And she kept the other boy. 
It put a mark on my son-in-law. He struggles with it into adulthood and is a wonderful young man today. You know, if a mother could forget, God says, I won't forget. This screen up here says, you're not forgotten. And so I asked young brother Johnston to, to put a little extra uh, point up here to say, you know, string around a finger to help you remember. When you get my age, you need more than a string around your finger. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was sitting on the side of the bed the other day, and I didn't know if I was getting up or going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But God said, I will never forget you, Israel. I may remember in recent times, right in about the time COVID hit or a little bit before, and some of it was during the uh, Trump administration, that veterans uh, were not being treated right. There was unreasonably long wait lines. In fact, uh, the VA hospital in Clarksburg, was being investigated. And, and uh, those that served our country felt abandoned, and they felt forsaken and forgotten. You know, and the truth is that all of us, at some time or other in our lives, we, we have felt a rejection of one kind or another. Maybe we were passed over for promotion, or maybe we didn't get selected for the college that we applied for, or, or maybe we didn't make the sports team. You know, when I was, I was 16, uh, Brother Johnston, I was, uh, I was six foot one, but I was clumsy as a cow. I, I'd like a hog on ice, man. My legs would just go everywhere. <laughs> and uh, I, I can remember in gym class, I'm thinking, pick me. I'm tall. <laughs> I can't jump, but I'm tall. <laughs> Uh, pick me, and, and I'd be usually one of the last ones to get picked. And so I just said, forget basketball. I'm going to join the track team. And uh, I, I found out I could run. And, and uh, we, we've all had, in, uh, in my years of pastoring, I've, I, I, uh, maybe I'm preaching to myself a little bit today. We preachers do that from time to time. Uh, but when, when people fall away from God, and leave the church, you know, they, they don't quit the church. They fall away from God. And, and when that would happen, you know, Brother Johnston, I, a lot of times I'd question myself internally. Did I do something wrong? Could I have done something better? I, I, could I have changed anything that would help them stay in the church? Because as a shepherd, that's our job, is to look after the sheep. And so maybe, maybe the rejection that I have felt from time to time you know, it wasn't uncommon. Samuel, Samuel wept and lamented, and he had himself a nervous breakdown when Israel said, we want a king like all the other nations. And God had to scold Samuel for that. And, and so uh, all of us have felt some kind of, of uh, rejection. So Isaiah here, uh, as he reveals the word of God and the love of God for his people, he talks about, uh, this nursing infant. And the nursing infant is totally, that little baby back there that we all been Googling uh, eyed over this morning, uh, we got two new ones at home, and, and boy, they take over the whole church. I, I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to even preach over top of it. <laughs> Everybody wants to hold them little babies. Matter of fact, my brother becoming a granddaddy, he said, if I knew grand, grandkids was so fun, he said, I'd have had them first, praise God. <laughs> and so, so uh, uh, the, uh, the mother's love is legendary. And, and a child's helplessness really becomes its security. What you've been going through in this church, Brother Johnson has told me about the loss that, that, that you all have experienced. But I'm going to tell you just something right now. You know, when you, go, when you, when you come here to the funeral Saturday for Sister Sauters, uh, don't let anybody tell you sorry about your loss. Something is only lost when you don't know where it's at. We know where she's at. We know where Chris is at. For to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, so uh, 
our helplessness in times like you're going through as a pastor to shepherd these wonderful people. And uh, its its roots are in your personal family. Tough stuff. Tough stuff. But we got a tough God. Hello. Hang with me here. I'm going to... I'm going to get you out before 4 o'clock. There, there was a, I came across this little illustration, and it's so good. It said a, a teacher was teaching. I don't know when you start fractions. We got any teachers in the house? Huh? When do we start fractions? Fifth grade? Fourth grade? Third? <laughs> My goodness. Wow. Buddy, back in Hampshire County, we didn't start it till later. <laughs> but she's trying to teach fractions. And she said, Johnny, uh, uh, if your mommy makes a pie and she cuts it into six pieces, and uh, how many's in your family? Johnny said, uh, six. She said, well, if she cut the pie in six pieces, what fraction would you get? And Johnny thought a little bit. He said one-fifth. She said, no, Johnny, no. I, remember, there's six pieces of pie and six in your family. You, you, I'm going to ask you again, how, how big is your piece of pie? He said one-fifth. She said, Johnny, you don't understand fractions. He said, teacher, you don't understand my mother. <laughs> She'd say, I don't want any. How many got a mother like that? Oh, yeah, come on. We got a mother like that? I did. And, and so, uh, who loves you more than mom? You see, God will not forget. He doesn't abandon his people that he has called and chosen. God's people will never be forgotten. I was, I was uh, in Bible study the other night, and uh, one of the sisters in the church came up, and she said, Brother Garlitz, uh, uh, my friend here in the church, she, uh, she got rid of her house phone, and all she got is cell phone now. And she said, I don't have a cell phone, and I, can't, I don't know where to look up to get her phone number. She said, would you happen to have this particular lady's phone number? I said, I sure do. And I just reached into my pocket and got my cell phone out, pull up my contacts, and I began to give her the phone number. She said, I'll never remember it. Do you have a pen? Well, I just reached in my pocket, and I gave her a pen. You know what she did? She, she looked in her purse, tried to find a piece of paper or something, and, and she couldn't find anything. She held her hand out, Brother Johnston, and she began to write on her hand that phone number, 304, and I'm not going to tell you the rest. Uh, <laughs> and, and she wrote that phone number on her hand. And, and so God says through Isaiah, I have graven you on the palm of my hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. And thy walls are ever before me. He was simply wanting them to know that those marks, when, when Thomas said, unless I see the marks in his hands, unless I can put my hand into his side, I'm not going to believe. But in John 20 and verse 27, it's in red, in a red letter edition Bible. It says, then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger. And behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. How many are glad to know that he bore the marks of your salvation in his body? Hallelujah. I think we ought to just give him some real praise right now. God, oh God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for the marks that you took upon your body for my salvation. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, well, sometimes we wonder, where is God? I, I 
all the years I've been preaching, uh, just uh, about a year or so ago, I was studying the book of Esther. And you know what I found out, Brother Johnston? God is never mentioned in the book of Esther. The name of God is never written in the book of Esther. And then I got to thinking about that. Uh, Sister Garlitz, what made me uh, bring it back to mind is we went to Sight and Sound uh, Theater over there in Lancaster, and we watched the story of Esther. And uh, it was brought back fresh and new to me. And, I, and I've been thinking about it ever since. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you look at the, at the main characters, which is Esther and, and Mordecai and, and Haman and 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 so on. When you when when you look at all of that, and and there's never a mention of God's name. But when the story is over, the decree to kill all the Jews is reversed, and Haman, who sought the death of Mordecai, uh, is hanged on the gallows that he built for Mordecai. And there is no doubt. There is no doubt in our minds when the story is over that God was moving the pieces on the chessboard through the whole book of Esther. Ladies and gentlemen, you may not know what's going on right now, but if you'll just be faithful and keep walking with the Lord, you'll find out that his hand was on your life all the way through. And when you look back, you'll say, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just right on time. And so I'm going to praise his name. Hallelujah. Let's praise him again. Come on, let's praise him again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I praise you. I praise you, O oh Lord, for you are the mighty God. You are the wonderful God. Oh, glory. You know, uh, as I hurry to finish this up, in the book of Romans chapter 4, there's a, there's a wonderful, wonderful uh, passage in verse 20 and 21. And it says these words, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, he was able to perform. Praise God. The word of God must be mixed with faith in your life. You see, God is not moved by your dilemma. God is not moved by your situation or your circumstance. What moves God is faith. How many times in the New Testament, the accounts of stories of the miraculous, where Jesus said, I have not seen so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. It's faith that moves God. I've come to challenge you today in the midst of your lonely times when you feel like you don't know where God is in your world. You keep on worshiping him. You keep on living him. You keep on your prayer life. You keep reading your Bible through this year. Glory to God. That's what faith is. Having done all to stand, you just stand there for Hallelujah. What kind of promises? You know, I, I looked it up this morning in Hebrews 10, 35, and, and the writer of Hebrews says, cast not away. Don't discard. Don't roll your window down throw it out in the road. You know, cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. But you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you will obtain the promise. Praise God. As we, as we exit 21 and we step across the threshold into 22, I don't know what uh, 22 is going to hold for all of us. I have no clue. But what I do know 
that God's already living in 2022 because he's Alpha and Omega. He's beginning and ending. He's that which was and which is and which is to come. He's the almighty God. And his promises, one, one time he said, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to validate my promises. And so I look, what could I swear by? And I couldn't find anything to swear by, so I just swear by myself. You see, God's character will not allow him to lie. The devil's the father of lies. And if there's a voice telling you that God's forsaken you and God's forgotten about you, it's the devil. It is not God. God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Praise God. So what am I talking about? I listed just a couple things. Number one is his presence. Hebrew 13 and 5 says, let your conversation. That means your lifestyle. It means the way you live. It, it doesn't mean just what comes out of your mouth uh, uh, when you're talking to your husband, your wife, or your kids, or your pastor. Your conversation, your lifestyle. Let your lifestyle be without covetous. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. Come up here, young man. What's your name? Steve. Come up here, brother Steve. Hallelujah. He, 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 he promised us his presence. In Psalms, uh, I'm going to make sure I got the right one. 139. In Psalms 139, the psalmist says, I've been thinking about the goodness of the Lord, and it just blows my mind to use uh, 2022 English. Blows my mind. I'm just awed. Uh, what was he awed about? He said, Lord, uh, I can't get away from you. There's nowhere I can go but what you're already there. He said, you're in front of me. And he said, you're behind me. And he said, can I touch your hair? Yeah. <laughs> Some of these guys got these fancy hairstyles. They won't let you touch their hair. But. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. He said, he laid his hand on me. He's in front of me. He's behind me. Got his hand on me. He said, where can I go? Amen. Where can I go? There's no place that I can go where he's not already there. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know as you march into 2022, you can expect God to walk with you every step you take. Go ahead. He promised provision. He promised provision. I'm going to tell you what. Everybody asked me, I, I, several years ago, I don't know when it was, people asked me how I'm done. I said, oh, I'm just fine, I'm peachy or whatever. And I don't want to say peachy because Sister Johnston says that all the time. <laughs> I'm peachy. What is peachy? Anyhow, before I get in trouble. <laughs> and I don't mind being in trouble with him, but I don't want to get in trouble with her. <laughs> and she's fixing dinner, praise God. <laughs> Provision. Uh, my God, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all, everybody say all. all. If Billy Cole was here right now, he'd say, ladies and gentlemen, what does all mean? All means all. And he'd use that when he was preaching about how many got the Holy Ghost in the upper room. All of them. Praise God. It's God's will for all of us to have the Holy Ghost today. Right. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about joining the church or shaking the preacher's hand or getting your name on the Sunday school record book. I'm talking about a relationship with Almighty God. It's God's will. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the waters of life freely. 
Boy, what better way to start the new year than for you to be renewed in your relationship with God before you walk out the back doors? His peace. Wow. He said in the world, Jesus said in the world, you're going to have tribulation. You, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble. It's not about uh, whether or not you're going to have trouble. It's about when you're going to have trouble. Because you're going to have trouble. Man's days are short and full of trouble. But, oh, I'm glad I got a hand to hold on to in my trouble. Brother Pettit, when the doctor says you got to have surgery on your ticker, oh, man, you can't get much more full than that. What do you do? Just hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. His provision. He promised that he's going to take care of you in this new year. He promised not only that he's going to take care of you, he promised that he's going to provide for you and he promised that he's going to give you peace when you don't know how to handle the storm that you're walking into. And the revelation of this promise is what will sustain you when you don't know how you're going to get out of the storm you're in. And that is Philippians 4.13. Paul says it. We use it. To say I can make an A on my algebra test. Or we use it to say I can pass my driver's exam. Or we use it to say I'll be safe in my tree stand. You know, it says I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. That doesn't have one thing to do with a tree stand. Hallelujah. It tells us that there's a power greater than the weaknesses of our flesh that will be available to us in the moments of life when we walk through a storm. I don't know anything about these youngins. Got that nice little baby back there, but I'm going to tell you what. God just put in your lap a treasure that money can't buy. And I'm going to tell you something else. You're going to need the hand of God in that little Hudson's life from this point forward. And you've done a good thing by being in church on the first day of the new year. Amen. And so as our music comes back, he promised us his purpose. Job 23. Job, Job was the greatest hero of faith. In all the Old Testament, wasn't he, Brother Jones? Yeah, he was. He loved God, hated sin. But one day he said, the thing that I feared has come on me. The thing that I feared has come upon me. He, he got messed up. Brother Johnston, he said, curse be the day that the midwife said there's been a Man child born in my mother's house. I, I wish the day that I was born the sun would have never shined. You, you read his lamentation about his suffering. Read it all. But when he get over there to the 23rd chapter and the 10th verse, here's what Job said. He knows the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Sometimes in the moments when we feel like God has abandoned us or God has forgotten us or he lost the string around his finger and he forgot. When we feel that way, that's the day you need to go to Job 23 and 10. 
And one of my favorite scriptures in Jeremiah that relates to the nation of Israel, chapter 29 and verse 11. And the Lord says to Israel, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. I know the thoughts that I think toward you and you and you and you. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. What are those thoughts? The thoughts for peace and not of evil. And to give you a future. King James Version says a desire, a desire, hope. But the NIV translates it and says he, he's got a plan for your life. Why not we focus here on this first Sunday of the new year and say the best chapter for the first United Pentecostal Church of Ravens, West Virginia. Why can't it be written this year? We're enduring the trial that we just recently been through with the anticipation that we're going to come out of this like gold. And everybody wants to get a hold of some gold. Hallelujah. Let's pray and believe that God is going to bring a revival in Ravenswood, the likes of which we've never heard or seen in the past, and that the Spirit of God would flow out these aisles and out the door into the street. Say, Brother Gardner, you believe that? Just, just, just this past summer, a very precious lady in, in our city, in fact, she's a primary care physician's wife. She has battled little bouts of depression from time to time. And one day, we had been on a long prayer vigil, Brother Fazalor, and, and we were praying that people drive by on Route 220 would feel something pulling them to come into church. And on this particular Sunday, she was going past the church. She had no, she wasn't she wasn't coming to church. I don't know what errand she was on, but she was just driving back to church. And said she looked down there and saw that church and she said, oh, there's something in her said, you know, wonder what kind of church that is. And she pulled into parking lot and said as she pulled past the front door, she felt a wave of of some, I know what the wave was. It was the Holy Ghost, the magnetism of the Spirit. For no man could come to God except the Spirit draw him. I'm going to tell somebody right here, right now, the Holy Ghost is in this building and in this preacher, and he is drawing you. Don't you resist the Spirit because he'd like to start you out on this first Sunday of the new year and a brand new path for your feet. She parked in the parking lot. She walked up the pathway, opened the door, came in the church, and watched the service. She confessed to Brother Fazalor later, said, when I came in there and sat down in that church, all of my, my feelings of fear and worry, they, they just went away. I can't, I, I can't explain it. It, they're just gone. The Bible study. We had our primary care doctor in our Christmas play. He showed up for our Christmas banquet. He's sharing his, his family pictures with all the people in our church. He's not there yet, but I'm believing that God's going to fill that doctor with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because that's the will of God. Would you stand up? i got a hundred more things I could say, but I'm going to quit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and love Jesus just a minute. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you have not forgotten us. I thank you, Lord, that you have graven us on the palms of your hands. 
I thank you, Lord, that our defense and our well-being and care, Lord, is etched upon you. And, Lord, you are here in this Sunday school, in this service right now. Oh, hallelujah. Can't you feel the Holy Ghost moving in here? If you'd like to come and talk to Jesus a little while, I'm going to give a whole house altar call. If you want to stay six feet from everybody, stand in the aisle, stand in the side, but just move. And if you don't feel like, just move up one pew. Just move. And let's reach out to God for a little bit here before we close. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand. 